Have you ever been pulled over and wondered? Is he about to kick my ass? Well, wonder no more. I was going to say, wondered if you were going to be detained or arrested. Have you ever seen an Am I Being Detained video before? They usually consist of people asking what crime they've committed. Then they expect they'll be let go if the officer does not give them a satisfactory answer. Yes, sir. Where's that you have? You got no tag on your vehicle. It's not a tag. It's a flyer. I'm not operating in any regular activity. What? I'm not operating in any regular activity or, or for higher capacity or in commerce. Yeah, you don't have a uh, tag on your vehicle. That's the problem. <laughs> Did you read it? In some cases, the officers themselves seem to get confused on whether or not they have the authority to detain someone or seem unable to explain why the person is being detained. Am I, don't, don't go anywhere. I just asked you for your... Am I being detained? I'm just asking for Am your... Am I being detained or can I go? It's that simple. There are really short, easy answers to determine if someone is being detained and whether or not an officer has the authority to detain them. In this video, we'll explain all of this in very simple, easy to understand terms. When an officer can detain you, why an officer can detain you, what constitutes detainment. And after that, we'll review a few videos to see if you can determine whether or not the officer had the right to detain the people that they're contacting. First of all, let's define detainment. Detainment is an aspect of arrest, but when can you be legally detained without being arrested? Detainment means that you are not free to go. You're temporarily under police custody and subject to questioning for purposes of investigation. When you are detained and being questioned, under the Fifth Amendment, you can refuse to answer questions if you feel that the answer may incriminate you. Meaning, if an officer asks if you're drunk and you've been drinking, you can use your Fifth Amendment right to refuse to answer the question under the grounds it may incriminate you. Invoking your Fifth Amendment rights cannot be used against you in court. However, anything you admit to when you're speaking to the officer can. Under federal law, the officer only needs to provide you with a Miranda warning if he's decided to make an arrest and wishes to continue questioning you. As we said earlier, just because you've been detained does not mean you've been arrested. If you're legally detained, however, that can indeed qualify as a false arrest. So the simple answer is, if law enforcement is just questioning you and you've been told you're not free to go, then yes, you've been detained. Now the question becomes, when can an officer legally detain you? The answer to this lies in something that we call standards of proof. Standards of proof are legal criteria that we use to determine guilt in various degrees. In a court of law, a person cannot be found guilty unless the burden of proof is met. In criminal court, that burden of proof is beyond a reasonable doubt. If the prosecution cannot prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant has committed the crime, the suspect is considered innocent and released. In civil court, the standard that must be met for their burden of proof is known as preponderance of evidence. Preponderance of evidence means, after a jury or judge in a bench trial considers the evidence, they determine who has more evidence in their favor, meaning at least 51%. Police on the street also have to abide by standards of proof. An officer may make what is known as consensual contact with any person at any time, but consensual implies the citizen is willing and agrees to speak to the officer freely. In some cases, a person may be in a hurry or simply not wish to talk to the officer at that time and may refuse to do so and should be allowed to go on their way. But when can an officer initiate a non-consensual stop? This is where we get back to the standards of proof. The one you often hear mentioned in Am I Being Detained videos is probable cause. Probable cause is the standard of proof that you need to effect a lawful arrest or to make a search without a warrant. And it's the standard of proof that must be met if you're going to get an arrest warrant or a search warrant. Probable cause means this. 
The officer feels that he or she has probable cause to believe that a crime has occurred, is occurring, or is about to occur, and that the person that they're arresting is guilty of that crime. In the matter of a search, they must have probable cause to believe that the item involved in the crime is in the specific place that they intend to search. In order to get an arrest warrant issued, the officer must fill out an affidavit swearing that the facts that he's presenting are true, and then present that affidavit along with the warrant application to a judge. If the judge also agrees that there's probable cause to believe that the person you're arresting committed the crime that you're arresting them for based on the information you provided, then they will sign and issue the warrant. Probable cause is an easier standard to reach in some cases than you might think it would be. For example, if an officer sees you driving over the speed limit and either verifies this with a radar gun or matches your speed in his vehicle, he has probable cause to believe that you violated the vehicle code and he may detain you to investigate further. If the officer finds that there is some legal excuse or determines that a warning may be appropriate, then he may exercise discretion and choose not to issue you a ticket. But if he smells alcohol on your breath, he may decide to investigate even further to see if other crimes are also being committed. But what about situations where you have not seen a crime occurred? What if you have no probable cause? Let's give a hypothetical. Let's say you're a cop. It's 3 a.m. You're driving past a building that you last drove by an hour ago at 2 a.m. You notice that there's fresh graffiti on the wall. About a block down, you notice that a young man in his early 20s is running in the direction away from the graffiti. Just because someone's out for a jog at 3 a.m., at this point you do not have any probable cause to believe they've committed the crime. You didn't see them do it. If you had watched them commit the crime, then you would have probable cause. How can you stop them? The answer is reasonable suspicion. Law enforcement uses the word reasonable a lot. When we say reasonable, we mean that your average person in our society would likely find the particular thing we're talking about reasonable. Reasonable suspicion implies that the officer has a reasonable suspicion that a crime has occurred is occurring or is about to occur and that the person that they are detaining may have committed the crime. In this case, the officer can see that the crimes occurred and due to the proximity of the young man running, his suspicious behavior of running in the opposite direction would give the officer a reasonable suspicion that this could be the person who committed the crime. Under the law, this would allow the officer to stop and detain the person temporarily for investigatory purposes to determine whether or not this was indeed the person he was looking for. Giving your identification, such as a name and date of birth, is not in itself incriminatory. So in this instance, the person would be required to provide that information. If they refuse to answer further questions on the grounds of their Fifth Amendment rights, however, even if the officer arrests them, the officer will not be able to use the fact that they did not speak against them in court. If the officer finds other evidence, such as seeing paint on the suspect's hands, the officer may still find probable cause and arrest the suspect. Reasonable suspicion allows a short detainment for investigative purposes. If the detainment lasts for an unreasonable amount of time, it could be considered a false arrest in court. So what else can be done with reasonable suspicion? As stated earlier, if an officer has reasonable suspicion to believe that a crime has occurred, is occurring, or is about to occur, and they believe that the person that they're contacting committed that crime, they may detain them for a reasonable amount of time for investigatory purposes. And although this does not give them the right to search the suspect, for that they would need probable cause, it does give the officer the right to perform a brief pat down for weapons, which is also known as a frisk or Terry search. In the Supreme Court case Terry v. Ohio, it was determined through case law precedent that an officer may pat someone down for weapons if they feel that they're a risk. If it's 3 a.m. and you believe this person's just committed a crime, 
such a pat down would be completely reasonable. But there's also other actions an officer may take if they feel they have reasonable suspicion to believe the person has committed a crime. Aside from questioning the suspect, they may choose to require the person to perform a breathalyzer or field sobriety test. If a person was fidgeting in their vehicle, the officer is also allowed to search any areas within arm's reach of the suspect. If the officer at any point decides they have enough evidence to establish probable cause, the officer should arrest the suspect if the officer wishes to continue questioning them. All right. Let's rehash briefly. Reasonable suspicion means officer has reasonable suspicion to believe the person that they're contacting has committed, is committing, or is about to commit a specific crime. It allows the officer to detain the suspect briefly for investigatory purposes. It also allows them to perform a brief weapons pat down or Terry search. It allows the officer to question the suspect to determine if they have in fact committed a crime and it allows the officer to initiate other activities such as field sobriety tests or breathalyzer. Probable cause means an officer has probable cause to believe that a crime has occurred, is occurring, or is about to occur. It gives the officer the right to not only detain, but completely arrest the suspect. A situation that could constitute a probable cause search without requiring the officer to go to a judge for an arrest warrant could be if an officer was chasing a suspect down an alleyway and he saw the suspect throw a firearm into someone's backyard. Even if he could not see into the backyard itself, after arresting the suspect, the officer could most certainly enter the backyard without warning to retrieve the firearm since they had probable cause to believe it was there because they had watched the suspect throw it there. The other standards we briefly mentioned were guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, which was the standard of proof needed to convict someone in criminal court, and preponderance of evidence, which is used to determine whom the evidence favors in civil court. Now that everyone understands how standards of proof work, let's watch these videos to determine if the officers or the suspects are in the right. Got a complaint been looking at cars. Yeah, my car. Right here. The guy behind me in the uh, red shirt, he's, he's the manager of Kmart. Okay. So he's just walking around looking at these cars. You look suspicious. You got any ID on you? No. You driving that vehicle? <coughs> Excuse me? You driving this vehicle? I'm not answering your questions. Why well, aren't you? Why do I have to? Just asking you a simple question. You can ask. You got any ID on you? Yeah, I got my ID. Can I see it? No. Why not? You don't need to see it. If you're not in trouble, I can... Then, then leave me alone. What's your name? You don't need to know my name. He said I look suspicious for standing outside. That's all. I'm just waiting impatiently for her. That's all. Well, that's fine. Am I, don't don't go anywhere. I just asked you for your. Am I being detained? I'm just asking for am your. Am I being detained or can I go? It's that simple. Hold on, I forgot my phone. Why why are you acting like that? I'm just. Because there's no reason for you to, to ask me any questions. I haven't done anything illegal. I'm not doing anything wrong. I got a gentleman here who won't give me his ID. Now, had I broken into somebody's car or something like that, I can understand. But you know, I got I got got my kids in the car. I'm waiting. That's, for... that's fine. I just I don't even have to explain that to you. I mean, I understand. I mean, I, I was gonna say I understand, but I really don't. <laughs> this this area, you gotta understand. Blah 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 blah. Fort Pierce, what? Yeah, it's four beers. Okay. We had a lot of break-ins. Okay. What's it got to do with me? You don't have anything. What's your name? You're walking around. What's your name and badge number? I ain't going to answer your question. <laughs> you have to. You're a, a public servant, and it's your policy to answer that question. Really? They, yeah. You call your supervisor and ask him. Why would you give me your So you're not going to give me your name and badge number? 
See, you, you, am I being detained or not? Well, you ain't done nothing wrong. I guess you're not. Okay. Hey, uh, let me see your phone. Here. Plug it in. Okay. Will you plug it in? No, I just wanted to ask you. There was a gentleman in the Kmart. You know, there's a lot of break-ins. He was just protecting everybody, not not being a smart aleck or anything else. Okay. You know, and I just well, walked down to get his name. Sorry, but my I have an infant son in here. We are in a hurry. I, I probably shouldn't check. have even started this, but I mean, because now it's prolonging us to get out of here. You guys are you guys are keeping us from, I, had, from uh, I was going out the other inch or the exit out here to the man through Walmart. what's your name and badge number man oh boy I'm gonna get all of them he, he, he's walking around can I have your name and badge number please just stop can we now. just go no I want to get out of here they're not gonna let us go for what because they don't need to be asking us any questions I'm hanging out by my car can I have your name and badge number 342 name, name and badge number you have okay. to tell me, sir. I don't have to. I don't have to give you my name. Okay. What, what do you have? About? Nothing. The manager down there. He was walking around looking in the windows. He Is that a crime? I was have I committed a crime? Advanced, yeah, he flagged me. You can down. investigate okay. all you want, but I have not committed a crime. If you don't identify himself, put him in handcuffs. Really? Absolutely. Obstruction. So obstruction of what? Yep. You're obstructing what's justice your name, sir? For what? What's, what's the crime? What crime have I committed? What's your name? What crime have I? The what crime have I committed? You cannot detain me. Okay, detain him. Put him in handcuffs. Okay, I'll give you my. I'll give you my ID. We're not oh playing this game. We're not playing this game. We're not playing. Near the start of this video, the officer does express that he has reasonable suspicion. The source of the reasonable suspicion was a complaint given to him by the manager of Kmart. This means that the officer is officially investigating an incident and has the right to identify the suspect. Unfortunately, the officer doesn't seem to understand what reasonable suspicion is and does not express it to the suspect. At one point, he makes the mistake of telling the suspect he is free to go. But the man chooses not to go, instead waiting for more officers to try to escalate the incident. Unfortunately for him, this officer seemed to understand the situation a little better, and by obstructing the first officer's investigation, the man gave the officer's probable cause to arrest him for obstruction. When you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. If you've made it this far in our video, I'd like to say thank you. Before we show the second encounter, if you enjoyed our video, please like and subscribe. In this second video, we'll get to see what'll happen when someone wants to deal with issues they should handle in court on the street. Yes, sir. It's not a tag. It's a flyer. I'm not operating in any regular activity. What? I'm not operating in any regulable activity or, f or for hire capacity or in commerce. Yeah, you don't have a uh, tag on the vehicle, that's the problem. <laughs> Did you read it? No, no, yeah, it says not for hire, I understand that. No, but when you're driving on the roadway, you have to have a uh, registration tag on there. No. So do you have your license on you? No, you don't have to have that. You do have to. No, because it's a, it's a, it's a commercial activity and I'm not operating in a commercial activity. All right, yeah, you are. Tell right. me you don't know that. All right, do you have your license on you? What do I need a license for? Are you refusing to, uh, no, I'm not refusing to do anything. Uh, let me see your have I committed a crime? Uh, you uh, have your license, on, sir. Do you have an ID? Sir, do you have your license? Do you on? have an ID? I need you okay. to show me some ID, right, so a certified so ID from the state. I want you to show it to me now. Refusing your license right now is what you're saying? Are you refusing to show me your ID right now? You're required to show me an ID, and I want you to see. I want to see your ID right now. Do it. Thank you. Uh, look, how long have you been on the force? All right, sir, I'm asking you a question. 
you I'm asking you. Now, look, this is the way it goes. All right. No, no. I'm, I'm under arrest, right? Am I under arrest? No, you're being detained for investigation to a person. All right. This, that's bullshit. It is an arrest. If I'm not free to go right now, it's an arrest. Now, you either Mirandize me or, or detain. Look it up in the dictionary. Detain right. and Miranda. Uh, detain and arrest is in the same sentence. Right, go well, look it up. I pulled you over. You don't have to no, I don't know. I, yeah, I've already explained to you. We're past that. You, uh, on your way. We're, We're past you're that. Give me your license, and I will have you exit the vehicle where I will place you under arrest. And you can, okay. Uh, yeah, you go. You go ahead and do that. At your discretion. All right. That'll be a violation of my constitutional rights. And by the time you take me to jail and and my, take my vehicle, you're gonna violate no less than four, okay, which is a ten thousand dollar fine on you. And I can sue you personally. All right. Now listen. This is the way it goes. I am under arrest, and if you if I'm not free to go, then I am under arrest. Well, All right, so now you, I want you to show me a certified state ID right now. You're a pirate. Sir, well, I, mean, I don't know who you are. Uh, I don't know who you are. Okay. Well, are you refusing to show me ID? Thank you so much for a second. Damn. All right, your time starts. My time. You're on my time now. Okay. What What county are you in? Oh. You gonna identify yourself? Monster D host from Cop County Police. You need to show me some ID right now. I do not have to show you. Yeah, you do. You're required to show it right. on demand. Well, you can show it to me. Do it now. I want to see a certified ID. I want to see a certified ID. Are you refusing to show me your ID? All right, sir. Well, you can Are you refusing to show me your ID? Are you refusing to show me your ID? That's fine. Now you go right ahead. I hope you do. I've been through this before, brother. I've already been to the. I've already been to your fucking station, dude. I already talked to your captain. He's he's looked at my shit. In order for me to have a tag on this on this vehicle, I have to be in a. Fuck you, fucking pirate. Yeah, gotta go get the boss man, see what he's gonna do. Hi, sir. I need you to step out of the vehicle. Am I under arrest? Uh, as of right now, you're going to be under arrest. I need to step out of the vehicle. Why am I under arrest? Alright, sir. I need to step out of the vehicle right now. You tell me why I'm under arrest. Sir. I've already explained to him. Sir. I've already explained. You got ID? Where's your driver's license? I need you. Alright, now you no, may contact you with me. Give me your driver's license. You are required to show me on, you on, are on demand. You show me your driver's license. You got to identify yourself, bro. Hey, buddy. Certified there state go. ID. There you go. Now, do it. There you go. And guess what? You are required to give me your driver's license. What makes you think I'm driving? Okay. You will just stop. What makes that, that does that make me driving just because I was stopped? Really? You don't know what really? driving means. Look nope. it up. Drivers, operators, and travelers. Guess which one I am. What are you? Traveler. Traveler. Really? Look it up in the DMV, right up under drivers and operators. There's travelers. Not required to have a driver's license. All commercial the activity. I put your hands on the wheel. Alright. I need your name. Sir, do you have a driver's license with the state of Georgia? Do you have a certified state ID? I need to see it. Do it now. Hey, you're not seeing anything. Well, you're required to by law. Show me ID, yeah, brother. I don't know who you are. Anything. You're in a costume. Oh, you know who I am. Okay. I do not know who you are. Okay. Sir. Are you refusing to show me ID? Hey, it doesn't matter what I'm refusing. Uh, it's what you're refusing right now. I'm not refusing to do anything. I haven't, I haven't committed a crime. Look no, at this bullshit. Haven't. Look at this. So, are you going to show us your driver's license? Look at this. We got them circling. I'm I'm surrounded by cops now. Hey, sir. Yeah, I'm going to tell you all this. Look, you're on live now. You hear? Guess what, sir? So are you right here. That's good. All right. I'm invoking my rights, and I'm not going to waver any by error or other. So you're not going to show us your driver's license? I need... Who are you? Basically, he's refusing with it. I'm not refusing. He's going to take him out. I'm not refusing. Sir, 
Uh, I need you to step over here and show me your certified ID like the rest of these guys. I need to see a state certified ID. I don't know who you are. Now, if you're going to make contact with me, you can step over here. I'm not operating in any regulable activity. I'm not operating in a far higher capacity. I'm not operating in commerce. Do you understand that? Those are commercial activities. I just need to step out of the vehicle right now where this window is going to be busted. I'll take you out of the vehicle. I hope so, you do. All right, so I need to uh, lower the window right now or um, walk out of the vehicle. Okay. Uh, I'm in vocal mode. Okay, I'm going to walk out of the vehicle right now. Okay. Uh, Sorry, I'm going to walk out of the vehicle right now. Okay. I'm invoking my rights. All right. Uh, all right, hey, sir, put your hand on the wheel. Why'd you have to bust both of them for? Well, I have a bad wrist. In this instance, the officer had probable cause the moment he stopped the vehicle because he could see that there was no license plate on the rear of the vehicle. Most states have laws requiring that your vehicle has license plates that are clearly visible and that you have a driver's license when you're operating a motor vehicle on the state freeway. Again, the courtroom would be the proper arena to address this, not on the side of the highway. We hope you enjoyed our video and we have more to come soon. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. We should be releasing our video, Real Stories of the Juvenile Hall, in about two weeks. Thank you for watching.